welcome to the Carmela Masterclass. I just wanted to take a few seconds to really uh, welcome you and, and express some gratitude to you for taking some time out of your day to be here, to spend a few minutes with us and hopefully learn a few things that you can take back to your business and start implementing right away. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen right now. And um, you just have a quick second here as I get set up. There we go. All right, so you should see right now, um, basically my screen that says Carmel and Masterclasses. So just a little bit about our organization. Um, originally incorporated in 2007, believe it or not, but under a really, really different business model. I would say about seven years ago, I put all of my eggs into the social media basket. And man, that was the right decision at that time for sure. Almost five years ago, I had a second daughter. Her name is Bella. And uh, at that time, I, I still didn't really have a name for this business. It was 1354823 Alberta Limited, and, and that wasn't very memorable. So upon the birth of my second daughter, again, her name is Bella, I figured out that what I wanted to do was create something that really meant something to me. My first daughter's name is Carmen. Second daughter is Bella. That's where the name Carmela comes from. So uh, I know I get asked that quite often, so I thought I would address that right off the hop. We are an incredible team of eight women and one male, one man, one male. And um, yeah, we really, really work very closely with our clients to help drive a return on investment for them, regardless of what their business size, regardless of what their goals are. You know, the businesses that we work with, they'll bring us a problem and then we'll work with them. And that's a business problem. We'll work with them to develop some sort of marketing solution to help them come up with the right uh, sort of combination of, of digital options to solve those problems. So, you know, in these masterclasses, um, they are free and we are really just wanting to help the business community. I personally um, am so committed to seeing not just our business survive, but all of our all of our clients survive this as well, uh, and I I know that we will be stronger on the other side. And I just I encourage you if you you know if you don't know don't know myself I'm Stephanie or don't know our business at all, um, just just ask for help. Like we're here, my team's here, uh, and we really really want to meet with you. We want to engage with you, and and we just want to help. So. I really look forward to today's masterclass. I think you're going to take a ton away from it. And uh, let's dive in. Uh, today we'll be going through of various platforms and tools to use. Uh, whether you're on a tight budget or you're willing to do a full e-commerce site. Great. Thanks, Haley. So why is not e-commerce useful for you and why are these platforms useful for you? I think especially given this time, it's really important to take your brick and mortar store online as quickly and efficiently as possible. So with each of these platforms that we have chosen, um, it's just a range from the simplest way to get your store online. So that would be MailChimp uh, all the way over to a full e-commerce um, site with Shopify. Great, so we'll be going through MailChimp, Squarespace, and Shopify, and Canva for making some photo posts. So MailChimp, uh, we'll be doing a landing page. This is a free tool and it's an excellent solution for those of you who do not have a website or URL but need your products online for your customers to view. Um, this, however, is not a full e-commerce platform, so you'll just have to state to your customers to phone in to make a purchase. Um, but by doing it this way, you can save money uh, in times that are tight, like right now, and online visa transaction fees as well. Um, also later, you can um, sync your MailChimp to uh, integrate with the Square POS system if you do want to take um, transactions over MailChimp. 
uh, through MailChimp as well. Uh, your customers will be able to find your products through this direct link, through email, newsletter, and other social links. Uh, next today, we'll also be going through Squarespace. So Squarespace is a user-friendly website publishing platform that lets you build websites without coding. Uh, this is great for setting up full websites uh, and landing pages, and uh, you can put your menus, your store hours, or contact page as well for more information for your customers. Uh, in the end as well, you can also set up Squarespace to be a full e-commerce store. It just syncs with the POS system of Square. And then we'll be going through Shopify. So Shopify is a full e-commerce software and one of the best platforms in the business that you'll, and has everything you need to use to sell online on social media and will sync up to your retail store as well on POS systems. So it's great with large inventory. It's easy to set up and has a ton of app integrations and is very secure and has great customer support. And lastly, today we'll be going over Canva. So we'll be using Canva to make um, your posts look shoppable if you don't have it integrated through an online store. This way you can um, get your posts and products up online and customers will know that they can buy that from you. So Canva is just a good drag and drop, easy use with photos, libraries, and imagery. Great, so Haley and I went ahead and pre-recorded the next few segments so everyone would have a very seamless experience. There's some issues with the internet in the Rockies currently, as there always is, um, especially with so many people being online. We just wanted to provide you with a quick and to the point presentation. So just bear in mind that the next few slides, um, we're just gonna go through some simple steps and then we will answer your Q&A at the end of the presentation. Okay, so we're going to move on to MailChimp now. MailChimp is a great free tool to create a landing page. So I'm just going to fast forward through here about getting started with an account. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you just pick a username, enter your email. And what's great is that later, if you want to, you can start a newsletter database. Um, so it'll send you an activation email. We'll just wait for that to come through and then I will go ahead and log in. Oops, so MailChimp does this thing where it asks you for a verification code. It's just to keep your account safe. And you definitely want to keep this action checked off. So as you can see, it takes you to the different plans next, but we're just going to continue with free. And I'm just going to choose no for having a website. It doesn't really change anything. Um, you can connect your contacts here. I'm just going to skip through this, though, just for the sake of time. And we're going to go ahead and get started and skip this. Um, and I don't want any mailing to come through, so I'm going to skip this as well. OK, so I'm just going to skip these parts also. These are just another step in the process. Um, you can go through them if you want to. But I'm going to go ahead and take us over to create and I'm going to get started with creating our landing page. Um, so this dashboard is kind of where you see everything that's going on with your MailChimp account. Um, you can create a newsletter campaign, you can create pop-ups, um, you can create targeted branding materials such as ads, 
surveys, and social posts, but we're going to create a free landing page. I haven't tested the website beta version yet, um, but that might be something that's worthwhile as well. But because we just want to create a landing page for now, um, we're going to go through this way. So I'm going to name my landing page e-commerce and I'm going to begin. Okay, so here are all the different templates that you can choose from. Um, they include placeholder uh, stock images, but you can change all those to be branded materials once we've gone through everything. Um, so as you can see, there's a bunch of different lead generation options, payment options, or newsletter list growing options. Obviously, because we're doing an e-commerce store, we want to be able to accept payments in the future. So I'm going to go ahead and choose one of those templates. Um, you can obviously choose whichever one you think works best for you, but I think that the modern one is quite nice and straightforward. So we're going to go ahead and choose that one. Rocky's internet loading slowly again here. But already, as you can see, it's really straightforward. Similar to Squarespace, you can drop all your blocks around um, and really narrow it down to how you want it to look. It kind of looks like a store already, so we did pick a really great theme. Um, the layout is nice, but one important thing to remember is that eventually you will have to create an e-commerce store. I'm not 100% on how you would connect this to your payments through MailChimp, but um, we can definitely go over that in a one-on-one -on -one session. So you can see all the different theme options over on the right-hand side. Um, again, it works with Block. So you just drag and drop um, your options where you want to add them in the main content. Um, so you can add images, text, dividers, or whatever. So I'm just dragging an image here just to show you how it works. So I dragged and dropped it. Um, you can add an image really simply by clicking browse or dropping your image right on that box. You can change the style, uh, the settings, and the content all really easily as well. I definitely recommend um, creating some branded content for this page just so it all looks cohesive. But I'm going to go ahead and show you that you can easily duplicate the boxes by clicking the middle icon there, and then you edit the box with the pencil. Um, you can drag anywhere in the box or you can use the arrows and again, it's super simple to just drag and drop it anywhere on the page. I'm going to go ahead and just delete these additions that I made. Yes, I'm sure. Um, you can also hold the alt key to just skip this dialog box. And I would suggest using an image group to showcase all of your different offerings, or you can do individual images. Um, I would go ahead and add your social follows at the bottom um, and make sure that you have a button um, beside each of your product offerings. Again, it's like the Squarespace page. You want as many calls to action as possible. So if you go to the right and click style, you can see how we can edit all the different sections on our page really quickly. Um, testimonials is right there. Purchase is the t-shirt here. And then you can edit the details, summary, and then the footer. Um, so footer is definitely where you want to add your contact information like before or your social icons. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and I am going to go over this block. Um, so you can connect Square with MailChimp. 
Um, I would assume it's pretty easy, but we're not going to go through that right now. So again, if you want to set that up, we can do a one-on-one -on -one session. But for now, we're just going to create a simple landing page. So I'm going to delete this block. And then I'm going to go back to blocks and I'm going to add an image. Um, and so this image is going to be our product. Like before, I just drag and drop, and as you can see, there's a caption below. And I'll show you the difference with an image and text. So as you can see, there's two different options here. One has the blacked out bar at the bottom, and one just has regular caption. Um, visually, it's appealing either way. It's just up to you which one you want to choose. Once you navigate over to the right hand to content, you can input the caption text there. One thing to note in MailChimp is you never edit the text right in the landing page. It's always on the right hand side. So as you can see, I'm just typing in black women's high heeled shoes. Um, and this is kind of what I suggest for you to do. And then I would also include the price. You don't have to include a divider like I did. I just prefer doing it this way because it looks nice and segmented. You can really do it whatever way you want to. Um, and then as you can see, you can kind of add a description below. clearly having some typing issues today, but I'm sure you get the point. And then once we're done with the description, um, you can always duplicate it to make it super easy and cohesive looking. Um, I definitely recommend doing that moving forward if you want to keep everything kind of looking neat and tidy. And always hit save and close after you change something just so that everything stays. And then I would add a button, um, a buy now or purchase now button after every single item that you put in. And then for the buy now button, we're actually going to choose email. Um, the email address is just where you want the form to go to. You can put a message subject in and then down in the message body, for example, if you are doing shoes, I would recommend having um, the product name, the price, the size, how many pairs and what color, etc. Basically, all the information you want to receive from your customer during the purchase is what you want them to put in the message body. So I'm just putting an example in here. Really, you can make it however you want. Um, if you can't see all the text, just drag it down like I did by the bottom right hand corner there to make the box bigger. So as you can see, I'm just adding in all the information that I would need from my customer. Um, contact information is definitely important if they're purchasing via email. That way you can connect with them and make sure that the order is proper before you go ahead and get it delivered. Um, obviously, just whatever information is necessary for your product, definitely include that in here. Um, and when you're doing all this, I would definitely recommend having someone else look over your work when you're done. Um, a second eye is always good to have just in case you forgot something. When you have a link or a button, I definitely recommend putting a title attribute um, and then always have it open in a new window. So you can see here I put buy women's black high heeled snakeskin boots. That way they just know what product they're connecting with you about. Next, if we navigate over to style, you can change the look of your button. Um, you can choose the color, you can change the border, you can round the corners. Um, pretty much you can 
do whatever you'd like to the button, but I'm gonna make it burgundy just because everything else in the theme is that color. Um, I'll leave the font the same here, and then you can change your button settings. I don't really ever change this, I just leave it the way it is because it looks nice. So we're going to save and close. And then I'm going to delete that top content block because I decided that the bottom one is the way that I want to go. Obviously you would add an image in here so that they know what they're looking for. Um, you can just upload this way or you can drag and drop the image right into the box. You can also segment it by products, Instagram or logos, which is really nice to have everything organized. All right, so we'll go back here. And obviously you can see, you can also add a payment, but because we're just doing a simple landing page, we're gonna leave it the way it is. You can also add a divider in between your products to make it look a little bit more neat and tidy. Again, just drag and drop that block and there you go, the divider's there. I'm going to save and close, and then I'm going to add a little bit of text. And in this text block, I'm probably just going to add a title for the section. So in this case, this is women's shoes. Oh. Women's. And as you can see, you can kind of put it wherever you want. It's kind of like Word that way. It's a mini um, Word document. But I like it off to the left. Women's shoes, there we go. I need an apostrophe there. Perfect. And now I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this because I also want to add men's. So I'm just going to duplicate the title and drag it down under the divider bar so that I have the same style. And then again with the image, I'm just going to duplicate it, drag it down and drop it underneath the title. Same with the button. I just want it all to go to the same place. It's just really nice to be able to duplicate because once you've done something once, um, you can kind of do it quickly the second time and you don't have to change any of the settings. So that button is going to be the same as the one previous where it just sends to our email and opens in a new window. Um, but obviously because this is men's boots, I'm going to change the title and the description. Um, you can change it obviously to whatever your next product is, but for the visual sake, I'm just going to change it to men's burgundy cowboy boots. Obviously, I'll change the description here. Um, obviously, cowboy boots would be perfect for a rodeo or dressing up your casual attire. So let's throw that in there. And there we have our second item. Again, we don't have to change the button because we just duplicated the one from before. So they're all going to send to the same place. One thing you do want to remember is if you did do a targeted message subject that you're going to want to go in and change that. And also in your um, message body, you're going to want to change it. It just depends on if you did what I did and put the title or not. And then in advanced options, just don't forget to change the title of the new window that's going to open. There we go. And I'm going to save and close that. And there we have our product offerings. What I really like about this design is it already kind of looks like an e-commerce store. Um, so as you can see here, we're previewing it. It's just so neat and tidy. You can view desktop or mobile. Um, it looks really great on mobile as well. It's always important to check and make sure everything's lining up and tracking properly. What I really like about this theme is how it shows your customer, 
customers' testimonials, um, and then you can just have your products and then your contact information below as well. So this theme is really great, and I definitely recommend using it if you're going to start your e-commerce store on Mailchimp. Okay, so that is everything to do with creating a landing page on Mailchimp. Um, I know it was really quick, but we are going to do a Q and A at the end, and I am going to pass you on over to Haley now, and she is going to cover using Shopify. Right, so we're just gonna go over the Squarespace now. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Let's begin with Squarespace. So Squarespace is a really great web designer tool. Um, you can start off with a free trial, there's plenty of templates and it's super easy to use with the drag and drop template that they've gone with for the web design platform. So let's navigate over and I'll show you some templates that you can use for starting with your e-commerce store. As you can see, there's plenty of theme categories on the left hand side. Um, I definitely recommend a few which we'll go over, but there's plenty to choose from. I definitely recommend um, either local business, portfolios, online stores, or professional services. As you can see, the local business themes are a little bit more integrated. Um, you can preview what they'll look like if you want, and I definitely recommend going through each category to see what catches your eye. Online stores is a great option for you. Um, as you can see, they're nice and simple, clean looking with a nice background. Um, there's one down at the bottom here. It's called Alameda. This one is super clean. Um, a great way to start off with your e-commerce store if you just want something super simple. Um, it's a little bit more integrated though because you do have to set up your Stripe to have an online store. So what I think would be best to start off with um, is actually a portfolio page. Um, let's navigate over to that now and I'll just show you what it looks like. Um, so I'm going to scroll down here. The Nevins theme is definitely the one that I recommend the most out of all of these portfolio templates. Um, and I think that's what we'll go with today. It's just really clean and you can just put um, the price and information in the title below and then each portfolio image has a separate page where you can add the full product information. Um, like I said though, I definitely recommend for you to browse through all of the themes, but for now I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, like I mentioned before, it is a free trial, so you can fully set up your website and see what it would look like without paying. Um, there is a fee afterwards, which I'll show you in a couple steps. Okay, so it's brought us back to the themes page. So this is the second step in the get started process. Um, like I mentioned, there are plenty of themes for you to go through. Um, but I've gone ahead and chosen that today we'll use one of the portfolio layouts to get started. Local business definitely might be for you, but it's just a little bit more of an integrated design and I just wanted something simple um, to get us started right off the bat today. So let's go ahead and just take another look here. Alameda is super simple, like I mentioned before, but you do have to integrate it with Stripe. So I'm going to go ahead um, and use the Nevins theme, like I mentioned before. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, I skipped through a couple of steps here, but don't worry, it's super simple to set up. Just choose what account you want to proceed with, and then it'll take you through the steps. I'm going to go ahead and get started with Google just because I do have that set up um, and I recommend integrating with Google anyways because then you can share all of your purchases through Google Sheets.
Typical Rockies internet is a little bit slow today, but here we go. And so once you've signed up, it'll take you to this welcome screen. So I'm going to name my site. Um, obviously this will just be what your store name is, but for today I'm just going to use something simple and straightforward. Um, after I do choose my site title, it will take me through a tutorial, which is really great to pay attention to. Um, it'll just kind of show you how to edit pages, customize the different options um, for customizing your website as far as design goes, how simple it is to add and remove pages and, and organize your navigation and then how to style your page. So for fonts, colors, etc., cetera, um, you can navigate everything within your theme simply. Okay, so here's our theme. Um, like I mentioned, it's just so clean and simple. Um, each of these images obviously would be a product. I'm just going to drag the contact and blog page down because for today's tutorial, I'm just going to be going over creating a simple landing page. So clicking through here are all of our products or portfolios. Um, so you can just click the dots here, go to settings and you can edit anything to do with that one product so the title the page address and the image you can also change your seo as far as the title and the description go um, so this is what shows up on google and then you can also change your social image uh, which you can see at the bottom on the left hand side there i definitely recommend filling out your seo for every um, product just so that you can show up on the search engine a little bit better. All right, so let's just navigate back. Here's our home page, and I'm just gonna go back one more time and navigate over to design. So again, here's where you can edit all your fonts, your theme colors, um, some custom CSS, et cetera. What's nice about the theme is you can definitely customize as far as design, fonts, etc. goes, but the general theme layout is there to kind of guide you. As I mentioned before, the main reason we're all here is for commerce. So I'm just going to click through. Um, you can get started. There's some steps that you can go through, but I'm not going to do that today. We're just creating a simple landing page, but as you can see, it kind of goes over everything that you would need for your commerce store. Um, so you can monitor your inventory, your orders, customers, um, integrate your POS system, um, do low stock alerts and your payments and checkouts. Um, payments do integrate with, I believe it's Stripe with Squarespace. So that's one thing to keep in mind is that you do have to have a Stripe account to get started. Another great thing about Squarespace is it does offer you integrated analytics. So you can monitor your revenue, units sold, orders, um, your conversion rate, which is really good to know. Um, in our Rocky Mountain Summit, we went over conversion rate optimization. So after you get your commerce store set up, you might want to join Stephanie's class on the 7th. Um, so as you can see, there's more commerce options. Um, you can look at your purchase funnel, your traffic sources, Google search keywords, um, and otherwise. Squarespace does integrate with Google really well, um, but it's just important to remember to fill out all your SEO um, and integrate your Google suite. Um, under settings is where you will integrate your Google suite. As you can see, our site currently is private. That's because we are running a trial version of Squarespace. So once you're done creating your website, you are going to need to upgrade to get the most out of your website. Um, and the prices are actually pretty good. 
They're not too expensive. Um, I'll take you over there and show you in just a few moments, but settings is kind of where you can update anything to do with your business, um, billing and um, your blogging as well. So like I mentioned, we're currently on our free trial plan, but here's all the pricing. Um, you can pay annually and save some cash, but the prices aren't too bad. Just remember they are in US dollars. I would definitely recommend just going with the personal for now, but you can upgrade at any time to a business or commerce site. But for $12 a month, personal kind of gives you enough of what you need because you're not doing a full e-commerce site, you're just doing the landing page. Like I said, Squarespace is simple and easy to use, but you can upgrade at any time. So if you feel like you do want to go with a commerce page, but for now you just want to pay the lower price, I definitely recommend doing that. And let's just navigate back now. I think I'll just show you a little bit more about how to edit your pages. And so we're back here on the home screen and here are all of our products. Um, if you don't want to have them laid out like this, I would definitely recommend just removing the portfolio and going with a gallery view, but I'm just going to go ahead with this view for now. Up in the top right, you can see that you can change your view so you can move from desktop to mobile. After you're done editing your website, I definitely recommend checking out what your mobile site looks like um, just to make sure everything's laid out properly and easy to navigate on the cell phone. Most of your traffic is going to be coming through mobile, I would assume, so it's definitely good to make sure your store looks great on mobile and desktop. Okay, so let's just navigate over um, a few more things here. So you can add your social icons. Um, that's done in settings, which I just showed you, but let's edit the footer a little bit. Um, I definitely think in the footer, you should probably include your contact information. Um, I'm just going to change the page title information to a product page for now. So just change uh, the page title and the slug. I won't fill out the SEO for now because it'll just be automatically generated um, because we're on a trial, but you can edit that once you move over to a full site. And you can inject header code there if you want to add like a Facebook tracking pixel or anything like that. My browser is taking a little bit long to load here. Uh, Typical Rockies internet connection. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to edit the blocks. So here we have the header. So you can change your header layout uh, for your logo and your navigation. There's a couple of different options, but it's really up to you what you think looks best. As you change things around, I definitely recommend saving after you change things. Um, just in case, typical Rocky's internet, uh, the website crashes or you change something you don't want to. So there's a plus sign at the top that's to add more blocks. Uh, we can manage our projects or products on the right hand side there. So if I go ahead and scroll to the bottom and click the plus sign, you can see I can edit the footer. So I'm just going to change the text because we're just doing a simple landing page. Um, I took out some links and I'm just going to add our site or store name and I'm going to put a copyright. And then I'm also going to include our location. So on a Mac, you can find the copyright symbol by hitting control command space. Um, I'm not sure what it is on Windows, but um, you can find one on the internet and just copy and paste it. So like I said, I'm going to add our location just so everyone knows where our store is. I just like laying it out this way. It looks nice and clean and I'm going to go ahead and bold our location as well, just so it's super obvious. 
Perfect. I think that looks great. And now I'm going to add a contact form. Because we're doing a simple landing page, the contact form is really important because that way they can call us, contact us, or with the contact form, they can submit their purchase order. So as you can see, there's a couple different layouts here for our contact form, but I'm just going to choose this simple one. Obviously, you'll change this information um, to reflect your contact information, and we can also go ahead and edit the form. So I would recommend adding a few form fields, such as phone number, um, shoe size, etc., or whatever product information you want to include in there. Um, you can also edit the storage. So I recommend adding your email address and definitely connect your Google Drive. If you connect your Google Drive, it just saves all of the information in a Google Sheet and it's super simple for you to go over afterwards. All right, so it won't let us save because we haven't added an email, but that's just generally how you would edit your form um, so that they can submit a purchase without connecting Stripe. As you can see, there's tons of different sections you can add to this theme. Um, you can definitely play around with it, but I 100% recommend adding a contact form. All right, so I'm going to save. And I'm just going to scroll down a bit and click a product. So as you can see, this theme takes you to a product page. I would definitely recommend adding the full product information here if you want for your client. Um, I would just add one or two more photos um, and then the product information. As you can see here, I can also edit the grid. Um, so you can change the number of columns, uh, the hover effect and all that jazz. Um, if you don't want it laid out like this, I would definitely recommend adding um, a gallery grid instead. But if you want to do that, you can ask us in the FAQ how to do that and I can quickly tell you. Um, as you can see for our products on the left, I clicked the three dots and that will take you into the product settings. You can change everything from general to SEO in there, um, just like you would for anything else when you click that tool icon. But as you can see, our store is pretty much done. Um, so this is what it would look like. As you can see, the contact form doesn't show up because we don't have a contact included in there, but it will show up when you're done. Okay, so that's it for Squarespace. Um, just a All right, um, next we will turn over to shop. All right, so now we're going to show you Shopify. So if you head to shopify.com, this is the home page. So remember that Shopify is a full e-commerce software and it's a great platform for having large inventory and has great app applications and POS integrations. So to start your Shopify account, Click here on start free trial. You're going to then fill out your information and create your store. Uh, for our webinar today, we've already created an account. So I'm just gonna go ahead and log in. So you're brought to your Shopify homepage, which will look like this. Uh, to get started with your Shopify, uh, you can select your plan. So we'll click here. So Shopify has a variety of plans for you to choose from. Uh, pick what is best that you feel for your business and how you want to grow an e-commerce store. Uh, the most popular has features like gift cards, retail hardware support, and then also um, integrates between your online and retail store. 
uh, their rates of charges are here, et cetera, and you can look those over and do more research for what suits your store best. So we're just gonna go back to our home page. Uh, next, you wanna integrate your domain. So Shopify does currently come with a free domain with your plan. It'll just have shopify.com at the end of your store. So if you don't want this, you can go to add domain and you can connect your existing domain name, name if you've already bought one, say from GoDaddy, or you can buy a new one directly through Shopify here. So once that's all set up, next you wanna do is pick your theme that you'll be using for Shopify. So you can head to online store, your theme tab, and then you can select your themes through the Shopify theme library. The Shopify does have free themes. Uh, however, we do not recommend these because they're very limited in what they can do. So we recommend visiting the theme store. So once in the store, you can see that there's hundreds of themes that you can choose from that Shopify offers. So there are a few specific things that we're gonna go through that we think suits online stores best and what you should look for when picking your theme. We're just gonna hit paid, so it narrows it down a bit. Next, you wanna click on large catalogs. That way, if you select your theme later on, you don't have to change if you've selected small um, and you wanna add more inventory to your online catalog. So we just recommend starting with a large catalog. So you can go through and click different things here if they're important to you. Uh, one thing we do also want to click is video, so make sure your theme is video integrated in case you want to add video at all down the line in your Shopify store. Video is um, known to convert, so we highly recommend that your homepage or other things have video to help keep shoppers engaged with your product. Next, we want to go down to navigation. And it's important to have um, a sidebar menu or sticky menu uh, in your theme as it keeps shoppers shopping while they're browsing through different items. So one of the themes that um, we've gone through and looked through that we would recommend choosing would be the Atlantic. This one here. And once you pick your theme, there are different themes within your theme. So you can have different variations. It'll show you over here um, where different menus are and things like that. So we'll go into view demo. So you can browse through the different themes and sort of what they'll look like for you and your products. So this is great when you hover over, it has a quick shop and an add to cart button right while you hover over the item. So quick shop opens up a different pop-up and they can add to cart and get more information right here and then just quickly exit out of the product. Also another great thing about the Atlantic that we like is when you go up to the tabs, it's all categorized. And then once you're in a category, this sticky bar menu is here on the side. So as the customer is scrolling through and looking at items, they can go back into the menu with ease. So what you're going to want to do once you find your theme that you like, you're going to hit try theme. And then that'll load back into your home page, which can be found here. So now you have the Atlantic up for you to try. So once you're in here, you can customize your themes to your store brand. So we're gonna hit customize. Then here on the side, you can see all the different things that you can change. So this is where you would add uh, your slideshow images, 
your featured collection products and images with text and then you can add say uh, your Instagram feed blog post and things like that under here so that all those are on the side uh, and theme settings you can match your colors change your colors to what is your branding so for now we're going to go back into our home page and next what you want to do is add product to your Shopify page so to do so come up to your tabs and click product what you first want to do is create your collections which will categorize the products that you will be adding Okay, so to create a new collection, go up to the right and click Create Collection. So for now, we will be creating women's tops and women's jeans for our product. Jeans. And what you want to do under Collection Type is hit Manual. This way, when you add your product, you can just add it to your collection and click save. And back to collections, we're just going to add one more. Create collection. And we're going to do women tops. And again, manual. All right, now that you have your collections here, we're going to add product and attach them to these collections. To do so, go over to all products. I've already added in a few products uh, for examples, but to add another product, just go over and hit the button add product. You'll be brought to a page that looks like this where you add your title of your product, a quick description, and the images you'll be using. Also for your images, make sure that you scale these before you put them into Shopify. That way everything will align once it's on your web page. Scrolling down, your pricing of your product, and your sale price and your cost. Next is your inventory. You can add in your SKUs here, or if your POS system is already integrated with your Shopify, this should integrate here and will look slightly different. And next, you can add your shipping information about your product. And that's the last for that. And we'll just scroll back up and go over to our organization tab on the side here. So here's where your product will attach into your categories and have tags for searchable items and all that. So we want to put the product type and this is our woman's top. And our collection, we want to add it to women's top. And you can also click home page so this product will show up on your home page as well in collections. But we'll just unclick. Tags I've added tags that are, are meta descriptors of your product. So when your customers are searching on your web page, this product will come up using these tags. And hit save. Next, we've also added another product to go under our other category to show you. And these are women's jeans. And we'll add it to the collection of women's jeans. And we will do the same for this other women's top.
All right, so now that you have your products and they're attached to your collections to show on your web page, we're going to go to back to our online store. Here, then we want to go to our navigation. And then we can see our navigation, our main menu that will show up on our page. So we'll want to edit this. So here's what will show up on our header. So we're going to add our new item and we will be adding the category of women if you have different categories for your product. And we're just going to attach this to a collection of women's jeans for now. Next, you wanna make subcategories for your women's category. So we'll click add item again, and we have uh, women's jeans, but we'll just say jeans, and we're gonna link that to the collection of women's jeans. And, and we'll want to come over to the side for the handle, and we'll click there and drag over until it's a subcategory of women. So now you can see you can add more subcategories directly under your women clothing. We'll just add the other one of tops and link to our collection of women's tops. And save menu. And so to view this, we'll go to our page and refresh and now you can see we have the category women with jeans and tops here and our product should be here and it is and our top so now we have our products and they're added to our different pages. We can go back to our Shopify home menu here. And Shopify has also really great applications and uh, integrations to find those as well. To have more options, you can go down to the apps tab and click here and you can go visit your Shopify app store. So here's where you'll be able to find MailChimp and you can use those integrations and then you can send um, newsletters and promos to your clients that are on your mailing list. And that's how you start your own Shopify website. All right, and lastly, we'll be going over Canva to make uh, product show, uh, your, sorry, your product posts look shoppable if you're not full econ. Lastly today, we're gonna to show you how to use Canva to create posts that look shoppable. So you're gonna to head to canva.com and you can sign up and log in right through your Google account. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. All right, well, so welcome to Canva. Uh, they have multiple layouts that you can start designing from, as you can see when we scroll down. So we are going to start today by making a Instagram post look shoppable if you're not integrated with a full e-commerce store. So you can go ahead and click the first one here and it'll give you a square template. So for now we don't need what Canva has given us. So we're going to click and drag to select everything and just hit delete. Next, you can head to your left panel on the side and go down to Uploads 
Here you're going to upload your pictures of your product that you want to make look shoppable. So we're going to upload an image or video. We're going to click our boyfriend sweater images that we uploaded earlier into our Shopify. And then we are also going to upload our shopping tags that we here at Carmela have made and we'll give to you at the end of the webinar. Great, so now your images have uploaded. So we're going to click the first image and it's going to be placed in our square. So we're just going to adjust the image size to fit the whole square. So wait till you grab the corner and click and drag. And position as you see fit. And we're going to add our shopping bag to the post. So back to our downloads and click the shopping bag and just adjust the size and move into the right corner. And there now we have a image that looks like a shoppable post and your customers can see that there's product available to purchase. Then we're going to create another page and it just makes a copy of the old one so you can go ahead and delete the image and we're going to add our second image of our boyfriend sweater again size to the square okay, now we're going to add tags to the product so back to our downloads and our tag and you can adjust and rotate here and place on your product. I also like to add a dot here so we know what product the tag is for. So you're going to head back over to your tabs on the left and click elements. Here you can see a multitude of different vectors that you can add to your images. So we're just going to go into shapes and our circle and size that a bit smaller and move over in front of our tag. Change the color, click, and you can go up to the top left corner and Double click from there, and here are your colors. Okay. Now we have a picture with a tag on the product that we're selling. To save these images, head up to the right top corner and click download and download again. And you can select either a ping or JPEG here and then make sure that your two pages are selected and download. And now you have these two images here that you can post on Instagram. We can do one more example, how to show you how to use multiple tags. So we're gonna add a new page. Back to our uploads. And here we selected an image with multiple products within. So you can add your tags. We're just gonna do this quickly to show. And I like to put the dots in again. Okay. And 
you can select as well and then do control C for copy and control paste. So it's a bit faster than adding a circle each time. And then just drag those over to the text. And if you like as well, you can go and add your shopping bag to this post. And there you can see that there's multiple tags attached to multiple items in this picture. And there you have it for a quick Canva tutorial to make your products look shoppable even when you don't have an e-commerce store. All right, so that wraps it up for each of our segments. Um, so as you can see, we covered MailChimp, Squarespace, Shopify, and Canva. Uh, MailChimp, Squarespace, Shopify are all great platforms to use moving forward to create your e-commerce store. If you're creating just a landing page, um, MailChimp or Squarespace are a great idea. Um, if you want to create a full e-commerce experience, you can go with either Shopify or Squarespace. Um, Shopify definitely has a little bit more clout to it, but both are great platforms to use moving forward. So we're really excited to offer uh, the businesses of Canmore um, a really great option for a website. So with a full website, we are offering you a $1,000 down payment with a payment plan for 36 months. So that is a full website um, designed by the Carmela crew. And then we're also offering just a landing page version uh, you can see at the bottom there. So there are two different options that you can choose to go ahead with, but either way, we would love to help you set up your online store. Great, so now we're going to move into a Q&A session. So if you have a question, you can just raise your hand in Zoom and we'll unmute you and you can ask your question and we'll do our best to answer. Hi. Hello, sir. Hi, right, can you hear us? Now I can. Awesome. Well, thank you for this. This was really, really helpful. Um, I have a question about Canva. So you just showed us how to add the, the tag and the shopping bag. Mm -hmm. How can you make that shopping bag clickable to actually make the purchase and not just be a static image? So this is... Um, it, so in order to have shoppable posts on Instagram and Facebook, it has to be integrated with your online store with your POS system. So this is kind of just a fake way to show your customers that you have product. Uh, so it wouldn't actually be clickable. You just need to write in your description. Uh, these are shoppable posts. These are the products that are in this post. Please call or email to purchase. Okay. You can also go ahead and add um, a link in your bio. So there's a couple different options that you have to create a link in your bio with a landing page. And we can definitely go over setting that up on a one-on-one -on -one session, Cheryl, but definitely the way that Haley suggested doing it is just a quick and easy way for you to get shoppable posts onto your Instagram or Facebook. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. Can I ask a question? Yes, you can. Okay, Steph here with Carmela. Um, I was wondering how much time does it take to set up the landing page option using, um, using MailChimp? And then my other question would be, how, do you, how would you do that if you didn't want to use MailChimp but you just wanted to use Facebook? What are some options? So really a two-part question. What are some options there and how long would the MailChimp take? I forget. So when I went through everything, obviously I didn't change everything around and it would really depend on how many products you have because the more products you're adding to the page, it gets a little bit more complicated. So if you're just setting it up for say 
five products. Uh, in my presentation, I set up two products, but I didn't go through like adding the photos and everything. I would say it could take anywhere from an hour up to maybe five hours, depending on how many products that you have. And then your second question, do you want to just repeat it for me? Yep, you actually made me think of another one though. Um, Randy had made a good point and he wanted to know, did you think that you could use um, blogs to help drive people to your e-commerce store? Yeah, oh, for sure. Definitely, you can use blogs to drive people to your e-commerce store, 100%. Okay. Um, and then my question was, what do you think or how would you use a Facebook auction or Facebook to create a shop if you didn't have the ability to make any of the tools that we went through today? I think that you could do it. Uh, actually, I'm going to kind of highlight Jade here. She did a really great job with using Facebook to sell off the mugs. Um, so you could create albums on your Facebook page with, I guess, like you could segment it based on products. So Jade did it with her mugs that she's selling. And then you just post photos and it's kind of just like selling anything else on Facebook, really. Um, and then you would just collect payments or do the transactions over Facebook Messenger or you could do it over Marketplace because I believe that you can actually request payment on Marketplace. So there's a couple different ways that you can do it on Facebook. Um, but if everyone heads over to Jade's page, um, she did a really great job. Awesome. Um, and if there's no other questions, I do have one more for you, Jackie. Holy smokes. <laughs> so there are a number. So Jackie, I just wanted to let you know that there are a number of questions coming in through the Q&A. Perfect. Great. Okay. As well. Go yeah, ahead. Perfect. I will just switch over to the Q&A after Steph is finished with her last question here. No, I'm good. Go to the Q&A. Thanks. Okay. So Kieran, sorry if I'm not saying your name properly, but Kieran asked, what do you think of Wix as a platform? And Kieran, I'm really sorry, but I hate Wix. I will never suggest Wix for anyone. Um, I know a lot of people who have had a lot of problems with Wix and it just unfortunately is not a great platform to use as far as functionality goes. Sorry. Um, and then Kieran has another question here. Uh, if you're looking at a website, is there any, well to any way to tell what web platform is being used? Yes, Steph actually sent me a website the other day and asked me what platform they were using. Um, and it's really simple. So if you have your web browser open, you can navigate uh, to developer tools and then you can actually pull up the page source, which shows all of the CSS or HTML that is on the website. If it is Squarespace, it will say it within the first couple lines of that source code. And you should also be able to check if it's WordPress as well. Um, it'll just, there's ways to check within the source code, but you can definitely find out what it is. Perfect. So I don't see any other questions here. Maybe Steph has another sure. one for me or uh, I'll leave it open for just a little bit longer. We're kind of right on time here, but we can definitely go for a few more. I see one coming in from Katrina, but Steph, go ahead. Um, I just, I'm going to hand it over to, to Eleanor for, for a few minutes um, with the Town of Canmore Economic Development. I think you had a few questions for the audience as well. Yeah, thanks Stephanie and the Carmela team for doing this. It's really great that at, in a very short period of time, you were able to pull this together. I know that as a community, uh, for many businesses, this, these are extremely hard times and we're adapting on the fly to new technology and new process and, and, and business. So thank you uh, for, for putting that on. What I really want to find out was from those attending, was this helpful? And one, are there other things that uh, as we uh, bring out a series of webinars, some through Camilla, some through other sources, um, what is it that you're, you're needing? And you can, you can either put that in the comments or you can email economicdevelopment at camera.ca. Bring those on. Next week we're doing one on understanding the, 
the tax benefits and how to apply for those. And that's done by one of our local um, businesses, Kelly, uh, Natalie Kelly, sorry, I said it wrong, uh, who's also a, a member of the Chamber of Commerce. So we're, we're partnering there. So we really wanna hear from you as businesses. What can we bring online fast to bring you the supports that you need at, at this time to kind of maneuver your way through? And I know it's complicated and there's so many faceted, but we're hoping that uh, tools like this will benefit you now. That's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. And, and Beth, did you want to um, address the, the group as well? I got myself on, uh, off video here. Um, I just want to thank all those that quickly signed up to uh, join. Obviously, um, we're trying to, as uh, Eleanor said, we're trying to um, make things happen in a very quick manner um, for everyone. And um, I just want to thank you all for joining, joining this morning and thank um, uh, Stephanie and uh, Jackie and Haley for and uh, the, one of the gals behind the scenes, Ali, for helping us put this together today. Mm -hmm. um, I agree with um, Eleanor. Uh, please let us know what it is that would be helpful to you so that we can add it to um, the information that we're sharing with you. Um, uh, I guess that's about it for me. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. So I'm going to hand it back to Jackie and Haley if they want to, if they have time to address any more questions. Um, again, if you have more questions, we're doing a, a coffee chat Wednesday. Uh, that's just a free session. You can come in and ask your really specific questions and we'll try our best to walk you through it. And uh, we have another masterclass planned for April 7th to talk about conversion rate optimization. Uh, there was a few things in the Rocky Mountain Summit that were not addressed that I really lean on as, as tactics on a daily basis. So hopefully we can uh, address those as well. And just a big thank you and some serious gratitude to our sponsors. So the, the Town of Canmore Economic Development, Beth Vandevoort with the um, Downtown Canmore Business Improvement Association. And I wish I had a clap track loaded right now. <laughs> uh, seriously, thank you guys so much. Perfect. Well, thanks, Steph, for hosting our chat. Uh, and yeah, definitely thank you, Eleanor and Beth, um, Downtown Canmore and Town of Canmore. We really appreciate you. Um, and thanks to all our attendees for your great questions and your attention during this time. Um, that's it for us. If you do have any more questions, you can definitely forward them on through via email or as Steph mentioned, come to the coffee house. And then we are always available to do one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. Um, so if you do want to get one of the Carmela crew uh, on board with helping you, just connect with Steph and then she can definitely help you do that. And Jackie, I wonder if I can speak to that piece. Um, a lot of times um, business owners will say, oh, I'm going to create my own website. Mm -hmm. And that takes more time than getting somebody in to help you. So weigh that. I know some of you have a bit more time on your hands now than you would have liked to have had. And I recognize that that might be a great opportunity to look at e-commerce as an option. But I also recognize sometimes getting the help from professionals like Carmela and there are others uh, can help you along the way. So balance that out in your business making decisions as you uh, look at this change of process uh, piece. Great point, Eleanor. Thank you so much for that. And uh, I don't see any more questions coming in here. So as we mentioned, this whole thing has been recorded. So look for that to come into your inbox. Otherwise, uh, yeah, this is the Carmela Crew signing off. Have a great day. Thank you.